Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to our channel TM Square. Today we are getting started with the brand new playlist on ISTQB foundation level syllabus 4.0 which is a revision made in May 2023 and should be rolling out gradually to the rest of the world. Somehow the at this point of time when I'm creating the playlist and making this video some of the countries have recently rolled out 4.0 but most of the countries are still working on 3.1 whereas 3.1 is expected to sunset by May 2024. That means from May 2024 all the examinations will only be on 4.0. So today to get started of course uh, we are looking forward to have a very first tutorial on introduction where we will let you know more about the examination, the exam pattern and many other things what are you supposed to know before you can get started with the content and the syllabus. To start with the tutorial, of course, the very first thing we have is the introduction to ISTQB as a part of Code of Ethics. In every single tutorial, we do introduce you about ISTQB, but when it especially comes to foundation, we need to talk about it because many people who are new to ISTQB would take up the CTFL certification. But once you are done with foundation for advanced levels, you don't need an introduction to ISTQB. So ISTQB, as the name suggests, it is International Software Testing Qualification Board, is an international body which qualifies in order to certify people, especially the QA professionals across the world, in order to address them, help them get recognized with the certifications. In fact, this is one among those certifications which are not related to a particular tool or a particular language. Indeed, this is more about your profession and your knowledge about the practices related to software testing. So one who is certified with this particular certification under ISTQB is known for their profession, not just for a language or a particular tool. At the same time, when we are talking about the certifications under ISTQB, I have several certifications currently on your screen and that talks about what are the number of certifications which ISTQB is offering right now. At this point of time, ISTQB is offering a lot of certifications which you can see and right from the left, if I talk about, they do have some of the Agile certifications. At the core, they do have more of the role specific certification like test analyst, technical test analyst, test manager, and so on. And we do have specialist side certifications, which are for the test engineers who are working on specialized practices, professions, or domain. For example, if I'm an automotive tester, then I do have automotive certifications for them. Similarly, if what if I'm a gambling industry tester, game tester, or performance tester, security tester. So no matter what kind of testing you are into, what kind of domain, what kind of industry you're working with, ISTQB has got you covered. But of course, there are certain specific and very unique domains which are not yet included here, where ISTQB keeps looking forward to add one or the other certification related to the QA professionals in the current world today. So over a period of time, a lot of certifications have been added and certainly over a period of time, we will have more certifications being added. So currently we do host all the certifications uh, which are marked in red. That means we host tutorials on our channel. So if you are kind of aware, someone who is looking forward to that, you can always go ahead and recommend. So today in this particular tutorial and this particular series of tutorials, we'll be talking about the very first certification, which is at the bottom most part, that is CTFL, Certified Tester Foundation Level. That's where everyone has to get started. And the connecting dots talk about the options of moving ahead to the next certifications. Coming back to the point, of course, uh, we do have things related to uh, this local body conducting examination. So one should know that it is uh, something as a practice that is just not that you can go and take examination anywhere. You have to approach your country specific member board to organize and schedule your examination. So every single country has, you know, where we have IT scope, of course, I cannot say that. 208 countries in the world will have uh, a, you know, a board specific to ISTQB. So ISTQB has recognized country member board across 
several countries which have the scope of testing or scope of IT, that is technology. And uh, that's where they have recognized a country member board to organize and conduct examinations on behalf of ISTQB. So for an example, if you're in India, you need to approach Indian testing board to organize and schedule your examination. And that certifications are under the tree of ISTQB. So it does not mean that you're not taking an ISTQB certification, you are taking an ITB certification. No, it's just that the certifications right behind me, you can see very well that you will have both the logos that is ISTQB and the country in which you have taken it. So your certification is recognized worldwide. So similarly, like, you know, we do have certification bodies in every country like Malaysian Testing Board, Singapore Testing Board, Saudi Arabian Testing Board, UAE Testing Board, Pakistan Testing Board, Sri Lankan Testing Board, Turkish Testing Board, and so on. Right. So there are many bodies available across the world which will help you to take examination within your country instead of jumping around. Talking about the next important thing is the cost. Again, cost varies from country to country, but on an average, most of the countries will keep it as close as possible to 100 US dollars. So it will be just as close as possible to that. But it may not be exactly the same if you convert as per the forex rates. It may be having a variation later to cost. So foundation level certification is around 100 US dollars for anyone to take up the examination. But again, if you are appearing from a company, you can get it reimbursed. But if you are taking on your own, just be aware the cost will be like that. Talking about the validity of the certification, the validity remains for a lifetime. So you don't have to rewrite the examination. Indeed, many people keep asking me specifically now that my 3.1 certification, which I'm already done, is it valid if 4.0 comes into picture? Answer is yes, of course, your certification is just like a graduation. So you have graduated once for your lifetime, even if you your syllabus changes, it does not mean that you have to graduate again. So it's, it's a certificate of profession. It's not a certificate of tool or language which changes over a period of time and the previous one becomes invalid. So the next important thing we are talking about precisely about the CTFL examination and their respective details. So this examination, the very first thing we are talking about is the prerequisite. Many people quite often ask that, is there a prerequisite related to ISTQB foundation? And the answer what we have is nothing. So you don't really have to write uh, any kind of fulfillment examinations or there is no specific prerequisite like a number of years of experience or what kind of graduation you should have done. Let me tell you very clearly that uh, these certifications have been even taken by our final year graduation students. So there are no prerequisites as such. So anybody who has the knowledge of the syllabus can go ahead and write this examination. Talking about the examination type, of course, the examination type remains objective. So it's just going to be MCQ. Strictly speaking, as there are a lot of websites, a lot of portals which are misguiding people. So there will be 40 questions. Each question will carry four options and any one can be right. You may find on internet that there are five options and they are asking you to select two or right answers. That happens, but that's in the advanced level. That is test analyst and technical test analyst. So it's not in foundation. Foundation strictly will have four options and any one can be right. Okay, so you don't have to be worried about such things, which certainly trick you around or take you in a very different direction. Talking about the duration which will be provided to you is 60 minutes of time. That means 60 minutes is one hour to write 40 answers. But at the same time, let me highlight you. Uh, if you're in a country which has different language spoken than English as their primary spoken language, you do get additional 25% of time that is 15 minutes extra. Generally, I don't talk about this during my beginning of the discussions because many people start treating that as 75 minutes for granted. I always want to keep it as a surprise. So, but many people commented that, uh, hey, you didn't tell us clearly that it is 75 minutes, but just keeping it posted right away at the beginning so that you know exactly that you have plus 15 subjected you are in a country where your primary language is not English. Talking about the schedule, uh, today most of the countries across the world conduct CTFL examinations every day depending on the number of aspirants. So especially if you talk about the Asia, all the nations in Asia, they do conduct examination every single day. All you have to do is schedule your calendar and uh, make the um, payment of the fees and go ahead and write the examination. Some countries where the number of you know aspirants are limited, we just keep it 
to the uh, weekly once or weekly twice but again you can just schedule it according to your availability and the time you need for preparation talking about the next is location and venue of course this matters only if you are taking offline examination of course every country is offering you online and offline both the options so make sure that you choose your option you know according to you that if you are comfortable with online you can take it right from your home or right from your office but if you're taking it offline then you have to go to the you know one of their listed test centers and write the examination also talking about the passing criteria which you would have already seen on the screen and that is 26 marks or more out of 40 so 40 questions each will carry one mark and total possible marks is 40 65 percent always remains as the uh, passing criteria under ISTQB so you need to get at least 26 or more even 25 is considered as fail and you will have to do a reattempt let me tell you there are additional costs for reattempts your hundred dollar is only for one attempt okay and you can write any number of reattempts till you pass so there are no limits on reattempts many people did ask me this so I'm adding all the feedbacks in the series of tutorial so it's just that like it is going to be one attempt in one cost and reattempts will cost you almost like 50% of the first attempt but there are no limits on the reattempts any additional info of course I told you already about uh, the 4.0 that there's a new release in 2023 which will be slowly and gradually rolling out in the rest of the world so you need to check with your body that's very important today that if you are in a country taking the examination on ISTQB foundation please check with your concerned mem member board that whether they are offering the examination on 4.0 now or not if not i do have a playlist i'll put the link at the end of the chat this video and even in the description for 3.1 playlist okay so i do already have 3.1 playlist you can refer that but if your country is offering on 4.0 please go ahead and take on 4.0 itself let's quickly talk about the syllabus what we have here with us uh, the outline pretty much remains the same and is going to cover uh, similar number of chapters what we had in the previous syllabus but again given that people might be coming here for the first time we have six chapters to talk about the chapter one it'll talk about the fundamentals of testing and uh, where we will be learning all the basic concepts basic terminologies and a lot of things related to what is testing so even you know someone who is who's not having any knowledge about testing can start right from here the chapter two will talk about how testing is practiced throughout the testing development life cycle how testing activities are performed in corresponding to those of the development activity and how the effort varies from the you know model to model and also if you talk about dynamic testing we'll be covering our levels here like what is unit testing integration testing system etc also when we talk about chapter 3 here we'll be talking about how we can prevent defects by conducting static testing so we'll learn more about what is review process what are the different types of review and techniques and so on so a lot of things will be discussed from the prevention point of view right in chapter 3. Chapter 4 is being called as test analysis and design and here you learn about the test techniques which help you to minimize your effort in terms of reducing the number of test cases but not compromising on the coverage. So you have a lot of techniques from black box, white box and experience based to talk about which we'll be covering in chapter 4. Talking about management uh, of test activities which is more of like test management and here we will be talking deep dive from the management perspective uh, of course introduction because you are not a manager at ctfl so we will be talking introduction to what is test planning monitoring control analysis in terms of uh, the you know matrices how exactly you know you can define the prioritization of the test cases which is the order of execution the risk management is going to be discussed a little moderate and intermediate level and then you do have introduction to defect management so everything which comes as a part of the process will certainly be covered here last but not the least you do have a test tool which you will be looking at and understanding with a quick introduction to what is a test tool how tools help an organization and process in order to minimize their effort at the same time optimize their outcomes and uh, what kind of tools you can select for different purposes all that will be discussed in the chapter six however all the six, uh, six chapters have different number of questions it is considered that every single chapter is very important and you just can't take any chapter as an optional because sometimes the questions are blended together considering multiple chapters at the same time 
Well, another important thing to talk about is the K levels. Uh, it is just from the perspective of that, if you are looking at the official copy of the syllabus, you would find that there are some of the topics or all the topics are marked with something called as a K level. Like you will find topics with K1, K2, K3, K4. So ISTQB Foundation has written from a body perspective that which topic needs what amount of effort. The K stands for knowledge. Now, when I say K level, it means knowledge level. The knowledge level, that means that how much effort they want you to put in order to answer a question in the examination. So say, for example, if a topic is marked with K1, it means remember. That means that topic, you just have to remember as it is written. And all you have to do is just answer that as an examination question. That means they will not ask you anything beyond they have written in the syllabus, which my slide deck will also follow strictly. Okay. When I talk about K2, it means understand. That means it's just not limited to what we have written. There might be a concept behind it, which you should learn and understand about it because we may ask you something in relation to that. That means we'll not be limited to definitions in order to ask you a question, but rather we'll just be going a deep dive and ask you how it happens, who's responsible for it, when does it happen, what are the limitations of it and consequences. So they may just go a little one step ahead than remember to ask you a question. Similarly, when I talk about K3, which means apply, and here this is basically for the chapter four, where the text, test techniques are considered. When I talk about the test techniques, equivalence, partition, boundary value analysis, they will ask you to apply this during the examination. That means they'll give you a simple question, ask you to apply the technique and derive the number of test cases. So it's just not limited to remember or understand. You must know how to apply and get to the right number of test cases. K4 means analyze, which means uh, a real time scenario will be provided to you and you will have to you know, go through the passage and then come to the conclusion that as per the passage, what is the right answer? But the reason I have marked it as, as red, because at foundation level, we don't have any K4 level questions. That means none of these scenario level questions will be asked to you. But yes, this is just for your information that what does K4 mean? So K4 will be there in the advanced level. So put together, I think this is what we had for you in the introduction session where we wanted to let you know that what CTFL is all about and what does it cover in order to get started. So we'll be having uh, each topic being discussed as one tutorial so that you have good amount of learning every single day. And at the same time, particular topics can be referred again and again. So I'll be breaking it independently to each video. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular video team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.